head and landing likely somewhere back in town. This is as you guys are leaving the, the tree line, making your own approach back to Kratos. Mina is despondent. This sort of glassy look to her eyes. And Eva does message all of you one by one, time after the other, to simply keep an eye on her. As she's likely not in a uh, well state of mind, as she says. Hmm. But you guys eventually return back into Kravos, where you guys see awaiting a tree, not too dissimilar as the one you guys rendezvoused at, a tree amidst the... Uh, the cornfields, uh, Flapper, just sort of watching you guys. You come back. You're not sure if Flapper has the capacity of talking. If they do, they don't exercise it as you guys pass by them, and they keep looking at you like an owl in the distance, just turning to look at you the whole time. You guys are back in the uh, civil section, so to speak, of Kravos. What do you guys do? Call it a night? Go jaunting around town? Mm -hmm. Get some drinks? Should we go check how if Francis is okay? Yeah. That would be a wise... Confirm his life. Yeah. yeah. That, would be, that would be a fair thing to do. That's fair. Yeah, I think Roba definitely feels responsible, <laughs> considering. <laughs> uh, you guys ask towards uh, Francis's location, predominantly. And some of the Velcaster guards who do routine patrols around town while they're you know, stuck here um, point you back to a, uh, uh, as I say, confiscated, an eminent domain claimed uh, section in the middle of town. And as they describe it, you guys realize, wait, that's where we were at. <laughs> Hold up. We were in, that's where we were comatose. <laughs> so you guys know the way back pretty, pretty quickly and handedly. And you guys return back, going to the heart of town. Passing by the lady's ear, the lovely tree it is. Um, Rudy does poke his head out and say, Hi. Then goes back into the ground. That's it. He disappears. As he does. Yeah, Rudy. <laughs> and you guys enter into what the domicile that you guys utilized before it was revoked from you. And inside, you guys see. Uh, I should get a token for Francis. Otherwise, you see Grover. Uh, you guys see Anvil. You guys see, of course, if I can find her art, where is it? <laughs> Aunt Liz. And you guys haven't seen him in a bit, actually. Um, you guys see Dell. Dell. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a bit. You guys enter into the place, and you guys see Anvil standing in the back of the room, arms tucked behind, well, his his back, just sort of examining the scene as Grover is doing a medical examination on Francis. And you guys do see the other guy, the guy with sepsis. He's also here. I, 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 look up his token, I have to look up sepsis. I'm like, no, it's not, it's not his name. His name is not John, John Sepsis. Are you sure about the John Sepsis. Yeah, you no. Know, the world is such a weird place. Uh, where is his token, actually? Oh my god. It's a real sick diglet. Yeah, like a real life diglet, yeah. There it is. He can stay small, though. Here, we're making green to ind indicate that he's sick. There you go. Not brown? <laughs> oh, you're right. It should be brown. You're right. <laughs> oh, my God. I condemn he's you got to sepsis. Blood. <laughs> <laughs> so you see that individual on the bed opposite of, of Francis. Um, it Alongside the patchworks, uh, like bandaging and salves you guys applied to him, some more have uh, clearly been added and applied to him as well. So you guys last saw him. 
Grover is giving Francis a medical evaluation, and you guys see Antlis sitting at the bedside of Francis, clearly in some form of prayer, or hoping. As you guys enter in, Ambo turns and looks at you guys and gives you a, a nod, like a greeting. And uh, ushers you guys in with a wave of his hand, like, come on in. How long has he been unconscious now? Because that's a good while, right? Yeah, because he got cracked on the back of the head yesterday, last night. Ooh. At this point, it's been 24 hours. Well, yeah, maybe, not a full, that's, that's not, maybe not a full... Maybe not a full 24 hours, but uh, approaching that. Yeah, that's still quite... Ugh. Not good. Yeah, no, that's not good at all. Grover's um, Magimorph is his companion or extension of him, who knows, um, is, so to speak, fishing around in Francis's head right now. In a manner not too dissimilar as when he went fishing around in your head, Dahlia. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Who is he? Hmm. He just sort of stares at Francis and Aunt Liz for a moment. It could be worse, but it could be better. Blood is pulling in his skull right now. Oh, fucking hell. Grover is doing his best to remedy the situation, but we don't want to jump to just tapping into his head to let it out. And we're just simply trying to prevent it from accumulating, swelling his brain. He looks towards this direction and leans in closer towards you guys and whispers, killing him. Oh. Is there something we can do? Uh, something we need to, to make assist? Or uh, I, I don't... He holds up a hand, like a pausing hand. I show you Grover, despite his demeanor, is a medical expert. And has many resources at his disposal. It will rely upon Francis to make it through. Oh, Mittens is also here. I forgot, I forgot to say that. Oh, you also Mittens. Way to oh my god. Way Which, um, actually, I need a token for Mittens. Uh, <laughs> hey, Need Not, can you do me a favor? Can you take a picture of Twitch and send it to me? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> because in my imagination, Mittens is like a fluffy cat. He's not like Tango, who's like a short haired cat. You know what? My head is been a fluffy cat as well, so that that that, that fits. Hold on, let's see if I just do that. I just have some good ones on hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. send it to me if you got He's them. got some. I'll take a look here. It'll take me a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah no rush, no rush. Just send it to me when you get the chance. Um, yeah, according to Anvil, like what's done is being done or has been done, but there is something that Francis's body is just gonna have to persevere through. Yeah, uh, Grover cannot, aside from extensive use of drugs and hallucinogenics, which probably isn't wise, um, mm. he can't get someone to want to live. And as he says that, Karadok, that there's like a ting, a ting, a ping in the in your mind of when he says like will to live. There's that ping in your head for a second, echoing. So. According to Grover's diagnosis, in the next 12 hours, it will be conclusive. Francis will either be, will either pull through fine, die, or become, enter into a vegetative state. Oh. Why did he come after me? Oh my god, this is just... <sighs> Do not dishearten. Well, sort of, uh... Remember, if... you, it is because of all of you that he is out here in the first place. I do not mean that in the way of getting himself into danger, but in saving his life. He and many other people in Velcaster would not be out here if not for all of you. Remember that. Yeah, I think it was just like, yeah, but I mean... <laughs> He avoided being annihilated in a fireball to instead just bleed out in his own head. Yeah, trying to save somebody who probably, like, you know... Ugh. 
He's We've a spoken. Boy. Yes. We spoke of the symbol. If you guys are so inclined, like us, you are allowed to stay here over the night. Again, and within the 12 hours from now, the results will be conclusive. Until then, Thanks. get some rest. Relax if you can. Pray to whatever new men you hold dear. If they're all out here. Not enough mind enough to be honest. I, I do need a word with you, Andrew. He looks in the direction of the bed, stares out for a few moments, and then turns back to you. Very well. You guys go into like equivocally like a, a foyer, like a place where you can like dr like leave all your boots and stuff, clean them off, stuff like that, like a entry area. But that isn't. We were. Waylaid on our return. He looks you guys well, up and down. Like, only you and him are in the entryway, but he does, like, lean into the main room and see how messed up a number of you are. <laughs> hmm? So I see. I don't imagine goblins to touch all of you. The cuts are too precise. No. Surgical. I do not fully understand what happened, but... Mina died. He looks into the room, sees that she's there. I assume you brought her back. At the cost of the diamond that you gave me. Ah, he does a dismissive wave. And diamonds are found all the time. They're made all the time. It will not be the last. You have no need to worry. You saved your friend's life. That is a very cause. This is like a slow, slow, slow nod. Yes. Although. I will to live. I am. Um... <clears throat> Yeah. I am concerned. I do not claim to be a psychologist, but even I can see that something weighs under heavily. If I do not have advice for you, not beyond what anyone else can tell you, to stay close with her, offer your support. But he shakes his head. I do not know what happened to her. But whatever it was, I imagine it's not something you can undo. No. So she will have to learn how to live with that. She will stumble multiple times. That is when you all need to be there for. Or else she will stumble onto another path. Maybe it's a path that will get her to success by, by itself. Or it might spin her into ruin. Or her darker ways. Just keep an eye on her, huh? I will. You have been a, um, a teacher and a mentor to us, me. Ah, my he shakes his head. I do not claim to be anyone's teacher or mentor. I say words. You choose to listen to them. <laughs> then let's say I have learned from you. Very well. No. I I heard a story. Well, there's this there's this old man back at home, looks over at um Francis, who um suffered a similar injury and he was asleep for a long time. But his family spoke to him every day and one day he actually woke up and he remembered everything that they'd said he'd heard he nods I don't know I don't know if Francis can hear us but I think it would do him good 
to listen, especially to his aunt. And perhaps he takes a step safe. aside. He takes a step aside, allowing you immediate and quick access into the room. Oh, go on, son. Thank you. I do. Go up to Roma and Jin. Mm -hmm. Roma? Jin? Yes? There is a likely chance that Francis can hear you. And I think it would do him good to hear that you are safe and home. In your own words. Tell him okay. what he managed to do. Okay. I can do that, I think. Um. Okay. I, I can well, come Jim, with or... you if you want support. That would be great. I'm an awkward little shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess she'll go over to... Oh, yeah. there it is. There it is. We don't have art for Francis, so we have art for mittens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've got our priority straight. <laughs> Twittens. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually have like a generalized token I could use for Francis. Let me check. Mm. But I keep just it. like a kid. Uh, I, got, I got one for you. So you give like some AI generator of like a, a knight in shiny armor or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh my god. The fact that you had that so rapidly like prepared. That's a thing I can use. Um, oh. Oh. oh my god. Perfect. I bet like soul just died there. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. That was a good one. I think Twitch knew that I was going to take pictures of him because now he's super cuddly after the photo shoot. Looks like five oh, from Rebel Academy. Yeah. I never watched this, I wouldn't know. Oh, yeah. Not really. It's not worth watching. <laughs> yeah, my mom spoiled the ending for it for uh, season four, so now I'm just like, nah. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah emotional sorry. trauma time. Two? Yeah, Will sure. you come as well, Jin? Or are you rather stabbed? Uh, he, he doesn't have much to say at the second. He, he just... Actually, he's just leaning on a wall, he'll just prop himself off it. <laughs> just like, nod in the direction of Francis' bed, like, go on. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'll be sure to let him know. No. I'm saying he'll come. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, oh, so no. can I? There we go. Now the Magic Wars in his head. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's <laughs> at, no, Wait, no, you need to tilt his yeah, head, tilt his head, tilt his head. Did I tell you when I was a kid, a horse did actually try to eat my head? I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I can't yeah. click this token. You're stalling, Kirsty. I am stalling. That's not the point. <laughs> We're also stalling, so we can adjust the the token. I'm not gonna adjust it. I, I can't select it. Okay. Yeah. So I, yeah, I guess we will adjust the bit. adjust. No. Um. Approach bed, I suppose. And like, is is the Atka like perched on the side of it or something, or is she kind of just? Yeah. Just Aunt Liz is sat next. Like perpendicular to the bed, just praying. Her ah, arms, okay. her elbows are tucked onto the bedside itself. Ah, like that. Okay, okay. I guess she'll just come and like be on the opposite side of um, Aunt Liz and just kind of not like not sit on it properly, but you know when you kind of like put half a bum cheek on, just kind of edge on the side. Mm -hmm. Like kind of pray with you. <laughs> Try to take up as little space as humanly possible. I get it. Yeah. Also do that comforting thing. Put a hand on his arm or something and give it a wee kind of pat. Um. Uh, uh, sort of looks over nervously. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Francis, it's uh, Roma. Made it out alive, thanks to you. Um, although I think you're needing to come back and do the same now. We've got to be matching, you know. But it was very brave back there. I think without you, it would have been a lot more dangerous. But we're all out now, we're all safe, we're all home. I think you definitely distracted them long enough that we could 
everyone else could come in and get you safe, get me safe, get out of there. But you need to come back now, yes? As ugly as she's here, she seems very worried about you. And I'm very worried about you. You need to come back to us now, okay? Sir looks down like, <laughs> is he listening? <laughs> Please! Make my, make my persuasion check. Oh. Oh. Oh, a zero. Hey, hey. That's pretty good. Pretty fucking good. Not For bad. zero. Not yeah. bad. Not bad, yeah. Do I get do I get the 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 the, the fourth? The guy. I imagine okay. Caradox around. <laughs> please, please. I mean he's yeah. next yeah, to the right range, so I think that's about as close to acquire casting yeah. as uh, you can get. Yep. He doesn't wake up. Hmm. Hmm. I think if there's just a, the, a brief moment of quiet as people wait for a reaction, Jin will pop in. You did a lot more in a very scary situation than most of them. I've seen people... Mm. I've seen grown men that would run from that rather than run towards it. Oh, braver than most. Then I'll just sorrowfully look at the kid. He there. There's more he could say, but he knows it's not. It's not the the right crowd for it, kind of thing. Tamer place, yeah. Yeah. Roman persuade an advantage. Sure. Uh, it is the exact same number as Rome, I believe. A zero, yeah. hey! Let's go. Oh, where, where is persuasion? Not, per, not perception. I wish it was perception. Oh, God, I needed it just to do worse. Did yeah. you add guidance to that? That's the two? Yeah, that's what the two is. I thought you had a special thing, never mind. Uh, hmm. He does for, like, nature stuff. I'm very... Probably too late now, but I do have an unusual competence. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Do you think a twenty failed? I mean, I didn't, well, I mean, was was there was there any sign of change in him when when we we were talking to him? I, I mean, you imagine, a thing. yeah, I feel like you magically get one HP and start talking to you guys. Again, I can tell you that. Well, yeah, no, I don't mean like that, but I mean like, was there any like you know, eye twitching or something? Like, did, you know, what I mean? that, like you're dreaming or something. Not that you guys ejected. No. Okay. Same throw, champion fade, bumbling buffoon. Yeah, bumbling buffoon. Bumbling buffoon. You're gonna bumbling buffoon. <laughs> I, I was just mumbling out out loud, like which ones I had, and then it's like bumbling buffoon. Yeah, yeah so you're going to the next role. villain, Garth Jesus. Die, child. <laughs> dice rolls and such. I think Alec earned a recap inspo. Oh yeah, most we got. <laughs> we hey, will Alec, never remember properly. Recap inspo. I don't want to. I don't want no, to. I don't want to either. I think. It's <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go to the very up, last. Like... I wanted to get to the very last session of the campaign where it's like fuck, fuck. Wait, Crash, you didn't do it. <laughs> 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 and then you use it, and then it, get, it turns into a success, and that's how that's how you defeat like the oh. great evil or whatever is happening at the time. <laughs> fucking sta fucking standing up against that. the 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 big <laughs> bad of the campaign, and we're like, huh, not bad. We forgot one thing. I remember the contents of last or session. Or should I say? <laughs> or should I say? <laughs> we forgot one thing. <laughs> oh, That'd be very meta. Anyway, yeah. thank you, Fred. I do think I've earned inspiration. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Please, let me use it! <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, missions is missing you. With you need to plus come zero. Back. <laughs> I mean, she ain't gonna do better. I have advantage at least. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's up to you. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe your guys' roles are helping, and we just aren't seeing it yet. You yeah, maybe yeah. yeah. making something for him easier that, like, a check he has to do yeah. or something. That's you the do way I think it. Have okay. advantage. I mean, it was great. As we could just keep talking to him, I suppose. Yeah. So yeah, I don't I think Ruma wants to leave. Results. Leave him anyway. So. Garth, you do or don't have an uh, advantage? I do. You, you yes. do? Yeah. Again. 
You can have an inspiration. Yabba dabba do! Four rolls. I have to, I'm gonna shut up actually. <laughs> Anyways, about that yeah. fortune. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> yeah, do not doff that pen to the dice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> roll roll one more time. <laughs> 16 it is. We use fighting spirits. <laughs> I mean, I've got a lucky if you want it, but... I think you can only use it on your rolls. Oh shit, yes, I can. Only if it targets you and it's an attack. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got excited thinking, oh, stuff, but no. Yeah. Honestly, 16 is good. 16 is good. Yeah. For a child in a coma. You sure? speak your words to the child in the coma. Uh, words of the truth? Cat, <laughs> the the cat. Piece. Min's actually is laying on him right now. On his chest. Oh. Yeah. We'll give him what we scratch behind the ears. He's a good cat. He hits that, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm sorry. It is not pets time. No, it is not. Not to the person that sort of caused this, Loki, but... <clears throat> <gasps> Cats can be petty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Min, Min doesn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> I will roll a thing for Antlers. Only I was level six or seven samurai that gets bonus to persuasion. Oh, I'll get wrecked. Yeah. Actually, I genuinely don't remember which level it is. That's fucking wood. Oh, yeah. You guys can hear her muttering to herself. Well, I guess technically to the powers that be. Asking them. <laughs> it's actually a bit of a roller coaster. She starts asking for help, for benevolence, generosity, asking them to look upon their faithful and their flock and tend to them as a shepherd would and should. But after a certain point in time, her tone changes. She begins begging, bargaining. She offers to redouble her faith. She offers to help around the community do the ritual of swallowing the egg, the incubation, five times as much if that's what's necessary, no matter the risk that she constantly runs with it. Then she starts getting angry. But they're all the same. Annoyed. She's lost so much much she's prayed all those times as well could this one fucking time they actually listen she can't lose someone else but eventually she tires herself out with her fury and then we resume as a silent prayer. You're not quite sure which tone she's praying in at this point, but her concern is triply mounted after that little tirade. To those of you with watching this exchange, can you roll me your perceptions? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Not bad. Middling. Quite good. Anyone else? Very good. Man, yeah, there's some good rolls. <clears throat> <laughs> You're a hard egg, then. Yep, they're mine. <laughs> Karadok, lost amidst your prayer, you feel some sort of shaking. A slight tremor, a quiver, something that shakes the bed, but you think it simply being Aunt Liz in her understandably concerned frustration and her own prayer shaking the bed. To the rest of you, you guys do see, for about a moment, Francis's arms shake, move, his hands tightening for a moment. 
perhaps it's his last gasp at life. Or perhaps it's some joyous sign that he's coming to. Grover, who's still fishing around in Francis's head, looks to all of you as the Magimorph continues its wet work in the background. He heard that. All of that. That's good. That's good. Thank you. He shakes his head, but doesn't say anything at that. He begins to extract his Magimorph from Francis and promptly casts some form of healing on Francis as the Magimorph is on its last way out of his ear. Uh, to Dahlia, roll me in medicine. Can do. Just give me a second. It's loading my sheet. Uh, Karak as well, because you're you would pro also have some. It's probably a much less common practice in Yolonia, but uh, it technically is a it could could have happened. Okay, yeah, as you've proved it sufficiently well, uh, makes sense that Dolly rolled so so much better on this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you guys have an idea of how because the injury is in Francis's skull, right? Mood. To get from the ear <laughs> to the left. hollowness where the brain is in the skull, there's not exactly a clear path from ear to skull into brain cavity. <laughs> so you guys assume that Grover had to go a more direct route. Which is probably why he needed to heal Francis immediately. Or else there would be an actual tap, so to speak, from his ear all the way to his skull. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Friendly. Yes, it is. It is quite visceral, and that much is evidence as you guys all see the Magimorph slick with blood, and then it just sort of begins to through its skin, really quote unquote skin, drink it. Not too dissimilar as to how the Vix's blade <laughs> drink blood. Are they related? Who knows? <laughs> I've applied what I can inside his head. He's semi-capable of listening to all right now, although I imagine it would sound foggy. Like hearing someone speaking through a cup. He'll make out bits and pieces, but it's not a perfect line of communication. And, of course, he is lapsing continuously in and out of consciousness as he rests. And I'm afraid the rest is exactly what he needs at this point. He looks to Aunt Liz, who's stopped her prayer to hear the quote, quote, doctor give diagnosis. Certain poultices and potions I have should not be applied to children. There's too much volatility there. The ones I would apply to Ash Wardens for such a situation might be lethal for young Francis, so we will abstain from that for now. Keep him in your prayers. Your hoax. He says trying to look at you, Roma, and you, Jen. Keep him in your hopes. He fishes around something in his pack and pulls out a pod, like a little like like the size of like a coconut. Actually, it's probably a hard case as well, like a coconut. Um, but unlike a coconut, you could see like where it divides, almost like an orange. Like those like lines where section by section is cut up. And he sets it on the bedside table next to Francis, and then his Magimorph turns its tongue into like a drill and stabs into it like a mosquito would, and injects something into it. And then the pod opens up in a flowering manner, and out comes a small sprig, this flower of a plant that grows a good bit. And begins leaning and drooping over Francis, almost like a, like a mobile. Whereupon it begins emitting out this purple, this pale purple mist. And it just begins like a sprinkler at the grocery store, trink, like trickling down onto Francis. What is that? 
a contingency. Aunt Liz stares at him for a moment, wondering what he meant by that, but she doesn't ask. Those of you interested can run sight. But, tis your call. Never mind. Yo, the ways of Grover sense. are mysteries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine fucking getting that ever. Yep. It's it's rough out here. <laughs> I used to roll so well against him. <laughs> so Badger at a nineteen. While you've not known many goblin medics and quote unquote doctors, if you can call them that. Um, you know, you've experienced and heard, well, maybe not experienced it, uh, that'd probably be bad, but you've heard many a time of your fellow goblin troops, soldiers and such, coming back to Makar or other encampments to give bad news. The tone in which Grover delivered that contingency plan in is in a very, very similar tone. You don't know what that plan is meant to do, but as he says, it's a contingency plan for... If slash when something bad happens. No, so the Badger won't say anything because he thinks Grover knows better. Fair enough. Fair enough. As you guys continue to Examine, Francis. Dell does walk over to uh, you, Falk. As the person that's sort of uh, towards the back or the exterior. He's probably waiting outside the room. Yeah, he's going to go up to you anyways. Offer you a hand. To shake. Take it. Been a while. Uh, who is this? Dell. Oh, Dell. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, shakes his hand, gives him a nod, and says, uh, "It does. Good to see you're in good health." He corks an eyebrow. Yep. <laughs> this oh. a new thing for you? Uh, old thing. Ah. He wags a finger at you. I always knew you were hiding something. <laughs> He holds up two play camp hands, but I respect it. Always know us. You know who says that, right? People that were duped. <laughs> you guys hear a bit of a raucous laugh coming from the entryway area, which is a very contrasting thing to the current situation. Fair enough. What happened to all of you out there? He throws a thumb back into the room. Got a bit of a show going out there. I assume by now you've heard that Frau Roma got uh, kidnapped. He nods. Heard about it. I was wondering why the Iron Hounds were skulking around the place. You're familiar. He nods. 